Here's the story of a lonely nomad who was almost finished getting his degree. From a college he wasn't very proud of talking evergreen. Here's the story of a cat named Jax who was busy meowing all day for his food. He liked to eat and sleep and eat and all the cords got shooed. It's decided they travel life together Plan to hit the road on nothing but a hunch So they gassed up the old Ford Tioga That's the way we both became Nomadic Bunch Nomadic Bunch Nomadic Bunch That's the way we became Nomadic Bunch All right, guys, we're out exploring. Uh, my idea to wait for the rain in Illinois, not gonna, not gonna work. Not gonna work if it doesn't ever stop raining in Illinois. So sorry for the delay in getting a video to you. Rather than take the RV out, uh, my buddies Sean and Jill got that nice, sweet looking black Impala behind me. And uh, we are gonna go on a little exploration today. It's gonna be drizzly and wet. And we're just kind of heading east, exploring. Uh, off of Highway 70 here in Illinois, and we have come to the city of Kaskaskia <laughs> with a ginormous fire-breathing dragon here, guys. Oh, yeah. It literally breathes fire, y'all. You don't believe me? Look how patriotic he is up there. I love it. Oh, I have every intention of letting this dragon breathe fire. You can put a coin in there for a dollar and you can make him breathe fire. But you gotta look at these coins. So I actually got two of them. It says Kaskaskia Dragon, Vandalia, Illinois with a little, little picture of the dragon there on the back. It says, dragon fire brings good luck, make a wish. So I'm gonna try a couple of these and maybe I'll go back in and even spend one more dollar, get one and then hot glue a magnet on. Wouldn't this be a custom neat magnet that nobody has? Are you ready? Putting it in right now. Oh. Okay, here we go. One more try. Oh, there we go. He's breathing fire. I see fire this time. Yes! <laughs> Well, one out of two ain't bad, right? Yeah. I still want to go in and at least get one more token. I do want to at least point out, uh, if you're on this route in Vandalia, Illinois, and you want to camp next to the Fire Breathing Dragon, they do have a little RV park, like literally right next door here with about 10 sites. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Well, we're still here in Vandalia, Vandalia, however you pronounce that one. It is uh, windy and still kind of misty, but thought this creation right here was pretty unique. Again, we are not in Missouri. We're not in Missouri at all. So we're nowhere near St. Louis. However, Illinois has their own mini gateway arch <laughs> right here in the city. A huge, I mean, huge for them. I don't know if it was for marketing or whatnot, but I would say it stands at least 70 feet tall here, right off the highway. Not in the best condition, certainly, but um, I'm glad they put the effort. See, you don't have to go to St. Louis, guys. Everything you need is right here in Illinois, where I have a house now. Yeah, okay. Hey, the rain, drizzle, and wind kind of led up. That was kind of nice. We're just going to be stopping at anything interesting along our way. So uh, made a stop here at Driftwood Pueblo, a little Native American uh, facility here that's closed for COVID right now, although you can do curbside pickup. I want to see if they had any magnets, but uh, we can check out a few things. Man, that car looks nice. I'm not allowed to touch it. 
I'm gonna rub it. Rubbed it. <laughs> we got a big old buffalo here. Uh huh. Big old buffalo. Oh, we got some metal horses here. Steel. Oh, and these are for sale. This horse could be your yard art for $14.99, guys. I think I need some for the house. I need something. Look at these monsters. Woo! Four grand. Four thousand dollars. And this horse butt could be yours. You know it. I like it, though. And they've got some teepees out here that have, uh, well, they've been out in the elements and the weather for quite a while, but let's see if there's a way we can go in there. Uh, Jill and Sean said we can go in here, although there's a lot of water in here. So, take a careful step here. Right there is probably safe. We're in a teepee, and it's not a wigwam! <laughs> it seems very authentic. I mean, these are pretty much just sticks. And then you got the canvas. Although not rainproof. Uh-uh. Not quite. This is a Native American Hogan. It's a home. You would uh, live in this structure here. Let's see if we can peek in. Looks like it would make a really good tiny house. Is it locked? Is it unlocked? No, it's unlocked. Ah, oh my excuse, gosh! Excuse me! There's a homeless person in here! Privacy, please. <laughs> it would definitely retain the heat better than a teepee, for absolutely sure. It's nice. It's cozy. It'd make a... Nice little tiny house. Yeah. Yeah, so this body of water has no name. No matter what I do, I cannot get it to tell me what it's called. But, got a nice little lake out there. And we were greeted by the friendly staff on our way out. Even though you can't go in, they brought out some custom magnets and I got me a magnet that says Driftwood Pueblo on it. Isn't that cool? It's a 3D rubber magnet i have nothing like it it is unique to the place we stopped at so i have a magnet well technically i already have two magnets today because like i said i'm gonna hot glue on a magnet to the dragon fire breathing dragon coin so i'll have even i'll have a magnet that nobody has anywhere in the country how about this we got some sunshine we've even got some blue sky trying to peek through over here found our way back to uh, Route 66 here in Illinois. In fact, a section of Route 66 that somehow I bypassed. I, you know, several times I went to Interstate 70 and we're here at uh, On The Rocks. It's a bar that's uh, closed. Well, maybe they do curbside pickup at a bar. I don't know how that works, but we got an actual tow mater, guys. A little rusty, but she is a purdy Chevy Apache. Look at them teeth up in front. And it's got the eyes. Uh-huh. Mr. Tomater. Towing and salvage. Radiator Springs. Man. And it's even got trees growing out of it. <laughs> that old Illinois plate. Land of Lincoln tow truck. Man, that is a nice truck. I do apologize, there's a lot of traffic out here on this section of Route 66. Now, I'm a, I'm a Bud Light guy. I did switch to Michelob Ultra for a little bit there at the beginning of the year for my diet, but I've always been a Bud Light guy. I'm gonna go back to Bud Light. I've been slowly transitioning. Well, this town, this bar has the, the world's largest Miller Light can. Yes, a monster. I'm just not much of a Miller Light fan. Uh, to each their own. Still, it's worth checking out. It's a roadside attraction, man. And look at this. They got a skeleton Skeletor riding a chopper up on the roof of the bar. Uh-huh. I mean, technically today what we're doing is going the opposite direction that I was going to go in the RV. So it made sense <laughs> to bring the Impala and <laughs> Sean got to park it in front of the Hot Wheels sign here. Uh, we are here at a garage museum place that say with me now closed for covid the never-ending covid at least we can go outside <laughs> i'll have to come back and re-hit up all these places that may reopen next year <laughs> see they got volkswagen acrylic signs there they're usually open monday through friday and saturday but now we're just waving to ourselves over here <laughs> Oh, what does this say? Yeah. 
Due to COVID-19, normal operations are currently closed. You can't see that sign, but it does tell us that. Uh, no reopen day here in Illinois. Again, when I get on the road, we're going to be going through the Missouri side. Missouri is wide open, nearly 100%. Illinois is still completely closed up almost everywhere. But yeah, they got some old side engine stuff here, and I will check this out later. NASCAR is back, even though it's without fans. Way to go, Harvick, winning the first race back from COVID. Yeah, and a little cow decorated for uh, NASCAR. All right. They do have a 1920s restored gas station out front. This guy thinks there's gas here. <laughs> Closed for COVID. Fill it up, sir. Fill it up. Let's see here. Yeah, they got the old uh, oil cans here. Uh huh. Really old pumps. And you know, I have been seeing the gas prices are actually starting to go back up finally. So maybe some places really are going to reopen eventually and let people actually fill up their gas and drive away. But let's look inside. That's pretty cool. Little office in there, yep. Yeah. So again, one day I will come back to this spot on Route 66 and hopefully go into some of these places that are closed right now. For today, just trying to keep most of our activities to uh, outdoor stuff. And next stop is the town of Casey, Illinois. <laughs> All right, here's where we were trying to get to, guys. The great town of Casey, Illinois, which apparently by this plaque is bigthingssmalltown.com in case you're looking. This city apparently has the world's largest several things. So it's like a one-stop shop. Got our little minion buddy here welcoming us to the town. Uh, we're gonna go around here and kind of see what we can find else. Yeah. Sean's gonna park the car closer to downtown. I'm gonna walk down here one of my themes of this channel, if there are any themes, has always been quirky and larger than life. And this town is not going to disappoint on any of those categories. Look at me, I'm in the world's largest bird cage. <laughs> I feel like Tweety Bird. <laughs> and the world's largest mailbox right across the street there. Yeah, they be sending some mail out in that guy. Oh my. So if you take a look up in the mailbox, it's got gears and mechanics up there to open and close the mailbox. Or maybe that's for the flag on the side. Yeah, that will raise the flag on the other side. That's pretty cool. I wish we can go up there. What? The mailbox is COVID open. Yes! Best day ever, y'all. We are going up into the mailbox. What is this, about six or seven stories? Oh yeah. Y'all coming to you live from inside the world's largest mailbox. <laughs> and yes, that mechanical arm with a chain will raise and lower the red flag on the side of the mailbox as we now get to look down on the street of Casey, Illinois. If you make it up here to the top story of the biggest mailbox in the world, they even have an actual USPS mail drop slot right here. You can literally put your mail in the largest mailbox in the country up here. Yeah, Casey, Illinois, where the water is blue. Turquoise. They got Casey's Candy Depot, but it is not open right now. And it's too bad we couldn't get in because they do have the world's largest shoes in here. Made out of wood. Would you know? Would you? I don't know why the fudge store had to be closed, but the bakery is open. I have to get a pastry. My cheat day. They do have a Homer donut, and oh my, it really is the last Homer donut. All right, I'm gonna enjoy my Homer. How does that look, guys? You wouldn't like it. You wouldn't like it, and you probably wouldn't like it. You oh. you might like it, but oh. I love it. What you guys got? I got the uh, low-fat bacon maple donut. <laughs> Jill? Okay. Got the Fruity Pebbles Rice Krispie Street. Yo! I'm glad we found a way to patronize the city of Casey, Illinois.
And now, the world's largest barber pole. Oh boy. Stand next to this and you can see how tall this sucker is. <laughs> so even though barber shops can't be open right now here in Illinois, we do have a normal size barber pole right here. That's a, that's a normal size for Tina's barber shop in there. Oh, that's really cool though. Look at that barber shop. Wow. Great little piece of advertising. I love it. I'm gonna have to falsify you a little bit though. This is not the world's largest pencil that actually exists in Washington state. And I visited that and filmed that. So at least it can get the world's second largest pencil. Which is currently out of lead and it is not a mechanical pencil. Very, very cool. Look how big this pencil is right here on the street corner. That is just too cool for school. And then it looks like they're still adding stuff here in town. Just a normal brick building. Oh, except for the four trucks sticking out of the side here. They're getting ready to turn this into a little food truck station. So cool, I love it. What does this sign say? Please practice social distancing. You know, we've been, we've been practicing social distancing for quite some time. I, I don't think we're practicing anymore. I think this is just kind of life now. <laughs> okay, well, I'll keep working on it. Very cool old bank, the Casey National Bank here. It is gorgeous. I love it. What does that say? Burglar alarm die bold. That is an original burglar alarm. <laughs> In case someone wanted to rob the National Bank here. Love it. Oh man. This is this is pretty original. Let's see, 24 hour depository. Locked. It looks like it may have been turned into a spa and maybe a, a, a restaurant. But also closed for COVID. And we're just gonna keep going. How about the world's largest dreidel? And it spins! Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Guys, I could use a little help here. I've just been caught in the world's largest mouse trap. Okay, I'm not actually caught. It does actually move. <laughs> yes, that is awesome. The world's largest metal saguaro cactus, which is built and looks very similar to a normal light post, but it's not. It's very cool, very different. You gotta do a lot of crisscrossing because there's stuff on both sides of the street. <laughs> I know that this is going to be the world's largest ear of corn. Mmm, buttery corn. East Main Street and Southeast First Street. I believe this is the world's largest intersection. Maybe not. But let's keep walking down here on East Main Street because I can definitely, definitely see something cool and quirky up here. That has to be the world's largest rocking chair. Larger than the one in Fanning, yeah. And I will say that the world's largest rocking chair is magnificently put together. It is a beautiful craftsmanship there. Well done on the world's largest rocking chair. Paul Bunyan would be proud. That is simply gorgeous. Across the street, you will find the world's largest wind chime. Uh-huh. Got up here a little closer to see the wind chimes. Dang, that is impressive. Am I allowed to uh, do things here? I think I think I'm allowed to like go like this and make things happen. Oh, you really gotta pull it. There we go. Now it's gonna make some sound. Wait. Uh, 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 uh. I'll bet the owners here have to leave when there's a windstorm because that would that would that would keep me up at night. And they might have some magnets. Wind chime on them and a chair. Let's see those magnets. Okay, we have magnets with the chair on them and the wind chime. All right, we got a magnet. I got the world's largest rocking chair. I think that's really awesome. I'm gonna need you guys to keep it down over there. It looks like just a normal bridge, but this is the world's largest teeter totter behind me. Currently, say with me now, closed, closed for, for COVID. COVID. Yes, yes, but uh, yeah. Next time.
All right, it's the world's largest something behind me. Can you tell what it is? Can you tell what this silver thing is behind me? It's the world's largest. Any guesses? Anybody give up? Go out here a little farther. No? We're at a, we're at a dealership. <laughs> it is the world's largest laser cut automobile key. And it's a Chevy. <laughs> awesome. Hmm. Okay. Ah, oh, I think I know where we're going with this. The world's happiest bookworm here at the library. Probably also the world's largest bookworm. Looks like a character right out of a bug's life. What a happy little bookworm. Fresh coat of paint on him. Yep. By the way, this is the type of thing I'm looking for to have out front of my house here in Illinois. Even though I'm not gonna be there but twice a year, I need something quirky and fiberglass for the front yard. So you guys keep an eye out for me. If you get something, I'll rent a trailer. I'll drive it across the country. <laughs> That's cool. All right, what do we got now, folks? What do you think this is? World's largest. Any guesses? Well, it is the world's largest pitchfork, y'all. Oh yeah. We're here at the Steel J-Jet Rental Sales and Service Center, and they have a new piece to add to Casey, Illinois. They used to have a large rocking horse, and somebody must have hit Paul Bunyan's favorite deer because now we have this enormous rack. That's a nice rack. Okay, we're actually here at the KC Regional Airport here in the city of KC, and I remember playing with those balsa wood planes that you put together and go off the building. Well, they actually have the, t the biggest one here in the world, the, the largest wood airplane on display. And look at the detail. They also have the front protector on, on the front there, so when you nose bomb it into the ground, it stays. Big things in a small town. Pretty cool. And again, there is the website if you want to download a map for your trip to KC, Illinois, so you can hit all these spots. Most of the stuff that you might want to see is actually, you can just park your car and walk around the, the town down there in KC on, on Main Street. These last few places we've stopped at, you're going to want to drive because they're one or two miles out here and kind of a little more remote, but I would say you want to check out as much as you can, right? And look at this, on the way out, they can actually buy one of those wood planes. They're $2, and it's on the honor system there. So Sean got me one. I can't wait to put it together, man. That is gonna be fun, thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. All right, well, I got mine put together. Look at that, it even has a, a, a driver in there, a, a pilot flying it. All right, let's test it out. All right, here we go, the first official flight. Ready for this? Yes! An amazing crash! <laughs> Nailed it! Okay, so you had a pretty good day then. Without me? I, mean, I, I missed you, but it doesn't look like you missed me. You just kind of did your cat stuff. As normal. You just had a normal cat day then? There's, there's nothing changed? Oh, okay. Well, that's... I missed you. A little putz with a button, kick your butt. I'm kicking your butt. I'm kicking your butt. I'm kicking your butt. I'm still kicking your butt. I'm kicking your butt, man. I'm kicking your butt in your belly. Like, man, don't do that. Okay, sorry. What was I thinking? I don't know, man. I ain't right. And I'm back to the RV here. Tonight is the last night I will be spending in Illinois for quite some time, folks. That's right. It has been the most interesting trips ever of my life to Illinois this year, with the pandemic still going strong in this state. And I mean strong. Still, nothing, nothing open around here. So, um, I got, I got a home base, in case, in case you've been uh, not following my channel. So, I eventually, one year, I will actually move to Illinois legally and uh, change my residency. Until then... I need to adhere to all the rules the way the government does it, and I still live in Texas because I haven't established a new residence. Just because I bought a house doesn't mean I live in Illinois. It doesn't just automatically work that way. No, you gotta physically reside in Illinois. You have to live in Illinois, and 
you know, one day down the road, way, way down the road, it is possible that I kind of move into the house. Six months on, six months off. We're talking a decade away though. So uh, for right now, we're gonna go explore. However, uh, and thank big thank you to Sean for dr doing all the driving today so I didn't have to do it, but uh, I'm just gonna go feed Jax, take care of Jax real quick. And then Sean, Jill and I, we're gonna pack up and we're gonna go over into Missouri for dinner because like I said, Missouri's open. Their restaurants are all open. Their bars are open. All their businesses are open in Missouri. In Illinois, nothing. Nothing. So I'll uh, bring my cell phone and maybe show you some of my cheat day foods here, okay? Okay. That's right. We found a restaurant that's open. Longhorn Steakhouse? Yeah. Longhorn Steakhouse Foreskin is, <laughs> is uh, back open. Not very full. I think we're the only ones in here. But it's open. The dining, dining is open. So as you can see, it's open, but they've closed off certain sections. Like the table across from us has a sign that says you can't. So they're like staggering us throughout the restaurant. But hey, it's open. And paper throwaway menus. Uh huh. It is so nice to be back in a restaurant that's open. Cheers, guys. Salute. Mm hmm. Oh, oh man. They're in uh, phase one right now of opening. They don't have a, they don't have a full menu. No. But. They're open. We're getting there, guys. We're getting closer. My steak's on the way. All right, food's here. Got the famous uh, Longhorn mac and cheese there, the mashed potatoes, and steak, y'all. That's right. My first COVID-free meal is steak. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Any of you uh, Disney lovers? This is pineapple... Dole Whip sold right here by the pint in Illinois, guys. That's right. I, it's soft serve, but um, I froze it. Exactly. You wouldn't like it. It's delicious. Even though it's like frozen solid, I'm using this plastic spoon, it tastes exactly like a Dole Whip. And they serve it also, like in a little smaller bowl, soft serve, and you can eat it right out of their shop. That is fantastic. It's like, it's like being in the tiki room <laughs> at Disney right now. Mmm. Delicious. Mmm. Thank you for the Dole Whip. All right, guys. Next. Next, next, next. Big adventures. Lots of miles. Uh, Memorial Day weekend. You guys got any plans? I know it's not really open everywhere. Obviously, I am not spending Memorial Day weekend in Illinois. I'm going camping, okay? So be patient with me. I'm not sure if there's service out there. If there is, um, I'll be posting some pictures on Patreon and Instagram and keeping everybody updated there until I shoot out a video early next week. Let you know how my Memorial Day weekend went, okay? Have a safe one, guys. From Jax and I, we'll see you, see you very soon from the road. Bye, guys.